Amen. Let me hear that again. God is good. And all the time. Amen. I see millions of angels in this sanctuary. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, some of our brothers and sisters are not here. They're in Stainer. Thank God we continue to uplift them in prayers. I'm sure they're having a grand time there with the impartation and the teaching. So they're in Stainer with the Michael Prophet and the rest of the team. And uh, we trust that when they come back, they will be empowered. They will be a different um, uh, man or woman uh, uh, when they come back. I'm definitely sure about that. Amen. And uh, some, of course, are not here. They're in the Philippines enjoying the sun. But uh, some are, are also sick. So uh, we've also lifted them up in prayers. Amen. So my name is Elena. <laughs> For some of you who don't know. And I will be here to preach the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. So let me first um, test those uh, who were born in the somewhere in the 60s. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, let me see if you can you can identify with this um, soundtrack. Sometimes when you hear this music, you will remember this familiar movie. And let me see who's smart enough to remember. This is the 1980s, so I apologize for those born um, high, uh, older than uh, younger than that. So can you identify what a movie soundtrack is this one? Oh. Or should I see? Or there. Rocky. Di pa matapos eh. Few notes pa lang. Rocky na. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, so that's a theme song of the movie Rocky. What about this one? I wonder if you can identify. Oh, that same was Star Wars. Star Wars? <laughs> Chariots of Fire. It's Chariots of Fire. It's one of my favorite movies, actually. Um, it is a story of, um, of Eric Little, and he, it's a true story, and I'm really inspired by this movie. Uh, the movie itself was nominated seven times and uh, garnered four awards, including Best Picture. Now, in the Bible, Jesus Christ himself describes life different in different ways there's a lot of figures of speech and metaphors and if you are in a christian uh, life walking through this journey with jesus especially for us believers he describes uh, several situations where in life can be like a boxing ring uh, you can be in a war zone where you're an army or a soldier or you can be in a vineyard or in, in farming or you can be an athlete running a race so as i was just um, meditating on um, the scripture and really seeking God uh, Lord what message do you want for this hour what message do you want and he he came back to me with a question and he said are you running are you running now there is a popular saying that uh, don't shoot the messenger so I'm only a messenger so I'm going to just deliver the message of what the Lord has in store for this church. So I just ask you to just bow down and pray and um, really seek the face of the Lord, what he, he wants us this afternoon to find out. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity and privilege, O oh God, to just declare your goodness. Just declare who you are in our midst and declare your words, Father God. God, we want to thank you, Lord, because we remember other uh, churches, Lord, other nations, oh God, they do not have this freedom, Lord, to speak even your name, Father. And Lord, we're so privileged to sing uh, praises to you, Lord, freely, and just to uh, declare your goodness, Lord, and just study and meditate on your word today. God, I ask you, Lord, I ask you, Father, that you will just make the soil of the hearts of the people, Lord, to be in a fertile ground, Father God. That your words, Father God, planted in their soil will really grow and mature, Father. Oh God, these are your words. And we honor your words today, Lord. Father, we know and we trust there's power in your words. And as these words are being declared, Lord, lives will be changed. Follow ground will be broken, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
God, again, thank you, Lord, for this time and day. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, um, in a race, there are several factors to uh, consider, like you need direction. There has to be a goal. You know where you're going. And there also has to be a starting line. So that is your position. Important that you know your position, a starting line and a finish line. And of course, also the disposition or how you run. And there are types of runners. There is, there is what you call a sprinter, where in the, uh, the test of speed is very important. And there's also the marathon, and this is a test of endurance. And actually, the race is a figure of speech or it's an analogy of our life, especially when we become born again as Christians, because there is a race already set before us. And um, can I ask just Franco to just, because I think that it's not working. Let me see. Okay, it's working. Okay, all right, so. Now when the Lord asks me, are you running? So there are several scriptures that run to uh, run to my mind and I just have to pray and search, Lord, which one? Because there's a lot of them. And um, first, the question is running in the path. There is, there is a path that the Lord commanded, commanded us to run. As he said, as he said in, in his uh, words there, in, um, that would be Psalm 119 verse 32. I run in the path of your commands. For you have broadened my understanding and run with perseverance the race marked out or set before us. So when we, be, we, when, we are, when we become born again, there is really a marked race set already for us. So you're there in the, in the scripture says, it obviously refers to God. It is his God's plan. He already gave a blueprint specifically designed for each and every one of us. And it applies to you individually or personally, and that command also applies to the body of believers. And we are called to run or mark or race. Uh, we are called to run the race marked out for us. In other translations, it says marked out for us. So each of us we have a specific destiny, we have a specific calling, and there are there are lots of um, examples. So if you read from Genesis, Genesis to Revelation, you see. Lots of examples there. So there are people who are running their destiny. And just a, a classic example of Joe, uh, Moses and Joshua. He had the calling of um, releasing the Israelites from captivity in bondage in Egypt, but uh, go to their promised land. But um, unfortunately, Moses was disqualified uh, from entering the promised land because of a single. Uh, I don't know. He said he, he was like. Disqualified because of um, he, he disobeyed a specific uh, command from the Lord, and Joshua was there. The baton was passed over to Joshua. And then um, let me let me um, bring you back to our fivefold ministry teaching. If you remember, this has been uh, repeated several times already about the fivefold ministry teaching. That in Ephesians 4:11 to 12, it was He who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets evangelists, pastors, teachers, and this is used to equip his people for works of service. The reason why I'm bringing this because really, I'm so thankful with CLC, our church. You know why? We are releasing people who are gifted in this area so the entire uh, body will be benefited. And we just done that with Pastor Roy. We acknowledge that he's really a gifted teacher. We have been so blessed with his teaching these past three years and we regularly see him and because his passion really is the Apollos project and he's been praying and fasting and that is his his original calling and thank God for CLC for releasing him into the entire body. So it's not just that we, uh, he's confined in blessing CLC Scarborough only but he is actually traveling internationally and right now he's in the Philippines and also training others to uh, help him in the Apollos project and there is an open door for him also to uh, do a Paul's project in Nicaragua. Can you imagine that? So we have, because we have released him to do his calling and his ministry, then the whole body of Christ is blessed. That is really the intention of God himself. The releasing of everyone in the body so we will all be, be blessed. And, and um, also, also with Pastor Jerry, he has an apostolic calling. So he is an, he is an apostle. It's, an apostle is not 
something, it's not a title of honor, but it is really an anointing given by God to set the church in order. That is his calling. So he's considered he is considered as an ambassador to establish the church. So that the God gifted gifted him with that authority to say that uh, we are out of order. We have to align ourselves and do this, do that. God will just give him the, the principles, the strategies to align the church where God wants this church to go. So that's his call. And as the word says, apostle, it means sent out one. So I don't even expect him to be here every Sunday. Because he is also called to do apostolic ministry. In, in, in fact, I'm so blessed. He's not only doing that among all our satellite churches, but he's even, in fact, sent to other churches as well. So I was just, when he comes here and he, and he talks about, you know, he, he was called to do this, um, to help the church. Uh, there was a problem in the church. So then I, I said, oh, our, our pastor is, has an apostolic calling. So I um, immediately understand uh, his calling. But um, let's put it on our own level, on our own selves. What about you? What are you called for? Individually, personally, are you, are you called maybe to, to uh, lead a ministry or to lead a care group? And uh, if you're not involved in any ministry now, you can just um, ask yourself, where are you in the race when you are in your workplace? or you as a mom in the house or a dad in the house or a son in the house so these are our races that we need to run and how are we to run them that's where the disposition comes we are to run the race with perseverance because it is given when we sign up for this race and accepted the lord jesus christ as our savior 100 percent guarantee there will be problems there will be twists, there will be turns, unexpected twists that you don't know. When we are running this race, you will never know what will come. What will come. And that's why it says we have to run the race with perseverance. And to persevere and overcome, we need to build a strong foundation. And if you can remember, Michelle was preaching weeks ago about how to build a strong foundation. And that is very relevant and very important that we need to build a strong foundation. Because the stronger your foundation, the more stable you are, and the more likely you are to persevere. Amen. Hallelujah. And I was just, uh, I, I remembered way back in Cebu, uh, some of you know SMU, Schumar, that's, a, that's what we call Schumar, is a, uh, a very uh, popular um, uh, mall there in the Philippines. And, when Schumer first started uh, to build their building there in the reclamation area, we already knew that, oh, that's Schumer, but we were so impatient because you know what? Three years passed and we didn't see any building. <laughs> Three years, and, oh, what happened? We thought that there were a lot of rumors, maybe it went bankrupt and maybe they, they decide not to pursue, but, I, but really what they were doing is they were building the foundation on the ground. It took them three years to strengthen the foundation because it was a reclaimed area. And then when it was done, wow, I said, oh, three years to build a two-story building? <laughs> That's only a two-story building. But we heard now, and we're going back to the Philippines this December, we heard that they are actually building an additional layer, an additional floor. So I think it's now four or five floors. So the builders of that building were already, already positioned themselves that in maybe 20 years, we are going to build like maybe 10 or 20 floors. But the foundation there was very important for them that it took them three years to strengthen the foundation. The building was just done in less than a year. But the foundation, it took them three years. Amen. And you know what? Let me share a personal testimony. I'm so uh, blessed to be here because I had a very good foundation back home. I was born again in the Philippines, 1985, June. And we were very new then. And then um, because uh, when we were born again, we had no church. We didn't know that uh, there was such a thing as a fellowship. And we were, I was just walking one day in uh, one of the, um, the streets there. And then I saw that, oh, it's a Bible study center. So I got excited because um, there will be some discipleship for me. And I got, I got to learn more about the Bible. So. We went inside that uh, Bible study center and we made some friends there and they were um, missionaries from the U.S. They were, they were all uh, Caucasians, right? And, and um, one time, 
when we uh, scheduled ourselves for a regular meeting already for our discipleship, this was really the first taste I have of hearing the voice of God. So I was very new in the faith. I have not read the Bible from cover to cover. I don't know um, Corinthians, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke. I, I, don't, I just heard about them in the past because I was a Catholic. But that particular instance, I came early. And then I was just sitting down in the lounge and just getting all those Time magazines and reading while waiting for my turn. And then I, I heard a voice in my head. It was not an audible voice, but it was a voice in my head. Scriptures, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. Oh, then I, I was looking around and then I just dismissed it, but then the voice in my head would not go away. And then it was it kept on louder and louder. I have to I have to get a Bible and search for the scriptures. Lo and behold, Corinthians 12, 13, 14, that's actually the gifts of the Spirit. And then chapter 13, the love chapter. So it's all about the Holy Spirit. Little did I know when I came inside that room. I was just sitting there, and like I, then he, uh, the um, that uh, the missionary was actually trying to like. In, in, if we relate that in uh, in CLC, we have our firm foundation, right? Because doctrinal, we have to be right in our doctrine. So he was already sharing uh, with me the doctrinal foundations of of the Bible study center, and and the moment he mentioned about the Holy Spirit, I just saw in um, I just saw between us a, like a film. A very thin film of cloth, um, and then whatever he said, it it was like arrows that bounced back. I could not hear or understand what he was saying, and then, but I just I just uh, remembered what I read, and then after he was saying everything, one question I asked him, and I, I said, "How do you explain and reconcile what happened to me just now before I came in?" Then I told him what happened and I said, I opened the Bible and I said, I, I just read Corinthians uh, 12, 13, and 14. And no matter what explanation he gave to me, it won't make sense. It won't make sense. Thank God because the Holy Spirit intervened that time. That time I didn't know. I was so naive. And then uh, months later, I just found out that this Bible study center, the doctrine they were teaching, they thought that the work of the Holy Spirit was done because only in the, whole, in the New Testament times they didn't be, believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and then when they worship they don't even use any instruments. So I was so um, astonished at, you know, Lord, wow, you are amazing, like intervening and I had a, 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 that's, a that's really part of the a foundation that I had and then that's why I recognized his voice because of that experience. And I knew the voice of the shepherd. I knew the voice of God because of that the first experience I had. I wasn't even like went into an encounter for the baptism. No, but I just, he just intervened and, and spoke to me. <laughs> it was so amazing. And so really building the foundation, nothing new. Back to basics, prayer, word, and hear the voice of God. So, Pastor Roy is really emphatic about this, about reading the word. He gives us all this uh, daily bread every every quarter because he wants us to have a strong foundation in, in the word. Amen. Hallelujah. And then, um, how are we running now? Are we running aimlessly? The scripture also says, therefore I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating in the air. And we are running aimlessly because there are also factors to consider there why we are running aimlessly. It can be a directional issue. Directional issue meaning you are looking at the wrong direction. You could be in the right path, but you are looking at the wrong direction. And this is the message I have for some of you here. Some of us are keep on looking at the past. We are stuck on the past. Things that we have done in the past, it keeps on haunting you. And the Lord is telling you now, put a stop on those uh, wrong direction. You, that's why your pace is so slow because you keep on looking at the past. The Lord already has forgiven you. If you have already surrendered yourself to the Lord, the past is past. He has already forgiven us and He's asking us to move on and look towards the direction where He wants us to go. And the second could be why we're running aimlessly is that it could be an identity issue. Are you identified with Christ Jesus? 
Is Jesus Christ really the Lord and Savior of your heart? And just remember, we are not, our identity is not determined by what others say who you are. Our identity is based on what God says who you are. If He says you are love, if He says you are beautiful, you are. Amen. So we will not allow any of a person who will speak negatively to us. That I'm good at that. But I can identify right away. Oh, I, 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 um, okay, just block right away and scriptures run in my head. But no, I am a child of the living God. I'm royalty. I'm a daughter of a king. Amen. I'm favored. Favored one. Amen. So speak the truth, but God spoke to you who you really are. And some of us here, the importance again of emphasizing we have to be born again. You're coming here to church. Even if you go to church three times on Sunday or midweek services, or you regular, regularly go to your care groups, it's not a guarantee you are born again. To be born again, you have to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. Surrender your life to Him. That, that is very important. That's the most basic step. Otherwise, you will all be running aimlessly. Amen. And then it could also be a focal issue, meaning you lose your focus or aim. And sometimes, I like what it says here, you're too focused on the task rather than on the outcome. And I remember one time Pastor Jerry was sharing here about, uh, maybe you remember the construction workers. There were two construction workers and they were exactly doing the same thing. They were laying a, laying a brick, brick by brick, brick by brick. And there was a man who came by and asked the first worker, what are you doing? And he said, can't you see? I'm laying down bricks. And then he moved on to the next person and he said, what are you doing? And he said, I am building a cathedral. So you see the difference? The other one was so myopic, he was just concentrating on his daily task, routine, lay, uh, layering the brick, brick by brick, but he, was, he doesn't even know why he was building a brick. But the other one knew that he was building a cathedral. So that should be us. We have different tasks, we have different roles, but we are building God's kingdom. This is not Pastor Jerry's kingdom. This is not CLC kingdom, no other kingdom, but the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's what we are building. Amen. Amen. And let me ask you, some of you here, are you running away? Are you running away? Are you running away from the will of God? Ask the person beside you, are you running away? Are you running away from the will of God? Or are you running away from temptation? Actually, I will not uh, read the scriptures anymore. This is very uh, familiar, like the running from the, away from the will of God. Like that's uh, Jonah and then of course temptation about Joseph and Potiphar. But see, there are some temptations wherein you really have to run away physically. As in really literally run. And I just remember this story from uh, Franco like a years back in the Philippines because they had a team of uh, professionals, economists. They were sent to Netherlands for a uh, master's uh, degree program. So they were a team, maybe I don't know, five or seven. And then when they went to, uh, when they were in the Netherlands, of course, uh, your families are left behind. And then one time they decided to go to a club. So they went inside the club, and there in the club, there was this uh, lady, she was wearing a, a, a skimpy clothes, and she had with her hand a whip, a, a horse whip. And part of that um, gimmick in the club is that they will hit you with that whip, and whoever, uh, he, uh, whoever is hit by that whip, watch out because something will be done to you. So the challenge was posted, and so this team of, uh, of uh, of, of uh, professionals, uh, uh, all of them went uh, away. They went, uh, you know, at the back because they don't want to be hit with the whip. But except one, <laughs> except one, he was like maybe at the back of his mind. I'll challenge this uh, lady. Um, I don't think so. Nothing will happen to me. Maybe what? What can he? What can she do to me? Just hit me with the whip. And so lo and behold, because she was, uh, he was just standing there and looking at the lady. And the rest were already like running away and he was standing there like really challenging uh, the lady and 
One was uh, when he was hit by the whip. <laughs> you know what happened? Two large men bouncers like uh, took him, uh, put him on the stage, and my goodness, strip him off naked. Uh, from really naked, and he was just standing there in front of him. And that lady made a nasty remark, and what a shame. What a shame. He was really put to shame. It took him several days, like he didn't even, when they went home, he didn't even go out from his room. It took him several days to go out because of the shame he experienced. So it's like us. We never challenge the enemy when we're not ready. So like a spiritual warfare where you're praying, you're interceding, never do that on your own strength. Yeah. So always ask the Holy Spirit, always ask the blood of the Jesus of uh, the blood of Jesus Christ to cover you. So never challenge them when you're not ready. Hallelujah. And um, yeah, that's also like running away. And um, this, are you also running a good race? And Galatians 5, 7, 8 says, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you? to keep you from obeying the truth. That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. So he says here, we are already running a good race, but yet, who cut in on you? The who there refers to external sources. It could be uh, persons of influence or, or it could be messengers of Satan. Because you know when you're driving and someone cuts you on the road, and, like you know, <laughs> Sometimes you lose your Christianity, like <laughs> when someone cuts, on, uh, cuts uh, in, front of you, in front of you. And the other one could be also, we are cut because of our own self. Our internal government is in shambles. We are not right before the Lord. And there are, that's what you call an internal stress factor. And also, and in, the, in running, there is also a, I'm sure the medical people here know, Herbert knows about this, about the stress fracture. The stress fracture really is, or what they call the hairline fracture. So this is just like a very a small a sliver or a cut or crack of the bones. And um, this is also like the, the uh, cause of this is it could be also your uh, bone uh, mineral density because it's not really strong yet. And, it can also be because of accumulated trauma over time. So it is a fatigue-induced fracture of bone caused by repeated stress over time. And the remedy actually is rest and rehabilitation. So that's what church also is about. That's what your care group is all about. That's why we have the hospital uh, part of the quadrant because that's why we're here in church. That's why we have our care groups because we do need rest and rehabilitation when we have these cracks as we run the race. And then um, this stress factor, uh, fracture also is uh, common among these uh, types of people. Um, this one. It is common for people who are sedentary. Sedentary is less movement. That means you have low physical activity. So that's what we call like a couch potato. You eat and then you just watch the TV. That's what you call um, also the bones are not used to the task, right? So the bones are not used to the task, and then there, then there goes a sudden burst of exercise. Now, if you put this in the context of our spiritual life, we, some of us here, are church attenders. That is not God's design. Amen. That's never God's design to just for you to just come in, attend church, go back home, and then Sunday, come back here again and attend church. Your spiritual gift is not used here and you're not being mobilized. And then when there's a, an army mode comes, you're not ready, yeah. wow, yeah, right. you will experience that stress factor. Because you're not ready. You're not up for the challenge. Because you just come, come on Sunday, go home, Sunday, go home, so you're a regular church attender. And then this is also common for um, children. Um, because the bones need to reach uh, full density and strength, so this can be likened to immature Christians also, those who are babies in the faith. Yeah, I have not seen like a 10 kilometer run for a three year old or a five year old. No, you, you don't see them um, competing or going to marathons this age because their bones are still tender. Okay, and then of course also, this, is, this, this can also happen to um, adults. 
because of repeated stress or trauma. No, continue to run, run the ministry, and um, in spite of the crack or the fracture that you already have, you're already wounded, and you keep on running when you're supposed to be resting and you're supposed to be in rehab. That's why we have this hospital, we have these encounters, we have these things, and yet you keep on running and running the ministry even if you're hurting. And so that's why they take um, some take the painkillers just to uh, lull away the pain, but in reality, the fracture is there. And um, I'm just really saddened and pray for this for these um, ministers who have fallen. A lot of high-profile ministers that you see, that you hear, because they have been running the race when they are wounded, when they, they, they should be resting already. And we just thank God for, I've been, I've been reflecting, and I, mean, thank God, I really thank God that when we were new here in CLC Scarborough, like six years ago, we were only like maybe 20 or 30, and Nelfa was, uh, was here really running the church, and, and um, we had uh, we lacked workers, and and um, I was a, a, a task to uh, to handle the Sunday school kids, and because of the lack of workers, so I, I said yes. And but actually, that's not my metron. But I'm just here to help, like establish the uh, the Sunday school. And I was really burned out. I was like so uh, I was burned out. I was so tired. I was I wanted to quit. I wanted to move away. I wanted to to go out and look for another church. Honestly, that, that was how I felt. But uh, praise God, our leaders came in and I, I rested. And uh, Pastor Elvi said, you need to rest three months, no ministry, just rest. And then um, Nelfa was there, was there also. And all of us uh, ladies, we went for a massage. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we had a good massage. We were to say, oh, well, Mama, Mama Nel, uh, Nelfa, and I can't uh, forget that. Thank you very much for the generosity. See, that's, that's how how we operate in the kingdom. That's how we operate in CLC. That's why you are channeled to your respective care groups because we want you to be taken care of. So when this time, a stressful situation comes in your life, when, there are, when you are experiencing a stress fracture, we will be there for you. The pastor cannot do everything for us. That's why we have the care groups to minister and to really help you. Amen. And... Um, one pastor said that the race is the journey of your life with Christ. You either run as best as you can or you sit it out wondering if you could have made it. Right? And that's just my ending. Are you running in the path with perseverance or aimlessly or are you running away from God? And I started with a soundtrack. I'm not going to end the soundtrack. I started with my favorite movie, Eric Little, uh, The Chariots of Fire. I'm so blessed by this man. And uh, this is a true story. If you have the chance to look, uh, watch this movie, watch it. It's actually known as the Flying Scott who refuses to run on Sunday. And his strength was the 100 meter dash. But because the competition was on a Sunday, he didn't want to dishonor the Lord because he wanted to uh, attend service. So he back off from running the race and instead he was put on the 400 meter dash wherein he was not prepared to do. But because of what he did, I'm going to read to you because it's, it's nice what he said here. Um, most of us only think about Eric Little as a man who wouldn't run on Sunday, about whom about, uh, whom about the Oscar winning movie Chariots of Fire was made. He was also known as a flying Scotsman and was the first of the country to win gold during the 1924 Paris Olympics. He's a committed Christian. Eric Liddell refused to run the race on Sunday and was forced to withdraw from the 100 meters, his best event. So instead, Liddell raced in the 400 meters and little was expected of him. And as Liddell went to the starting blocks for the race, an American slipped a piece of paper in his hand with a quotation from 1 Samuel 2.30. Those who honor me, I will honor. And Little ran with that piece of paper in his hand, and not only did he uh, win the race, but he even broke the existing world record with a time of 47.6 seconds. Can you imagine that? 
but I also uh, saw and heard, uh, I saw in the movie that um, when he started the race, when the gun was shot, he actually tangled with an American uh, or a British athlete and he actually fell. He fell on the ground and the, all of the other winners were already ahead of him. And he was just sitting there, but he heard a command saying, get up and run. So that was what exactly he did. He got up and ran in spite of, with, uh, time, in spite of his situation. He just got up and ran. And it was really a miracle of miracles where he was able to catch up and win that race. So we are in that similar race with Eric Little. I don't know about your situation. Um, I'm asking the uh, uh, worship, leader, uh, worship uh, team to come up. I don't know your situation now. I really don't know personally. But the good thing and the best thing is that God knows. God knows where you are in your run, in the race. God knows whether you are um, tired or feeling helpless. God knows whether you are running aimlessly. God also knows whether you are running away from His call or from a specific uh, assignment that He wants you to do and you're running away from this. This is what I love about um, this church because every Sunday there is always an opportunity for us to be healed. There is an opportunity. The altar is open. It's actually hospital time, rehab time. The church, every Sunday, wherein all the four quadrants are exercised. We have equipping here, we have the army mode, and we have the fellowship mode. After our uh, service here, we go down for our fellowship and snacks. And the altar call is one of the best uh, time for me. So whenever there is an opportunity for altar call, then I really need the Lord. You will find me here in the altar too. And we're opening this altar for everyone, because I believe that this message is not just for me or a few, but this message is for all of us. We are in this race, either individually, and we're also in this race corporately. Hallelujah. And let me just read this text from Acts 20 to 24. The Apostle Paul wrote this text. And I pray this is also our prayer today. And as they're going to sing the song, the altar is open. We want to minister to you if you're just tired, if you have any questions about your walk in the Lord, if are you looking at the wrong direction, the Lord is speaking to you now. We're just asking you to, He's just asking you to come and be transparent with Him. And by your coming here, it's not really a show of weakness, but it's an act of faith and God is pleased with that. And just like Eric Little, he ran that race and God honor that. And if you come to Him today, he will honor you. He will honor your prayers, the cry of your heart. Acts 20, 24 says, However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, God's grace is so abundant. God's love is new every morning. They never end. If you want that love from the Lord again and assurance, the altar is open as they're going to sing. And uh, we have the L5, so LV, we're here. We can pray for you. Hallelujah.